players are ready, so we're going to find out, is Hellraiser's going home, or are we going to go to map three? Anders and Semler, take it away, gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, NIP and Hellraisers. It's the second map, it's the quarterfinals, DreamHack Winter 2014. I'm Anderson, with me is Semler, of course. Semler, are you, are you prepared for this? Punch in the air, man, punch in the air. We're gonna get into it. It's gonna be the second map now on Inferno, and NIP have got the perfect start for this best of three. They pick up Dust2, and that's exactly how they had to go. They needed the confidence going into this best of three, and it was pretty crucial that they actually pick up Dust2 because Hellraisers, they're scary on Inferno, they're scary on Overpass. So this Nip are definitely not out of the woods yet. Well, we're getting straight into the action here. Forrest taking uh, one shot down the middle, just testing out the waters. It's Hellraiser, Hellraiser starting on the terrorist side here. NIP gets started on the CT side, which is a big advantage here. Even on Inferno, has uh, just also, like every other map, has turned more and more CT-sided. That's just how it currently is in the game. And they actually do have a lot of grenades, only exist with body armor, which is a rare thing for a, for a team to play a, a pistol round like this. Yeah, and the same thing for Hellraisers, actually. Usually you see at least three to four Kevlar picked up with one guy carrying the nades. Now there's three guys carrying full nades here for Hellraisers. That's really interesting. Well, it makes you really curious what Hellraisers have in store for us here. It looks like, for now at least, they're setting up on that A site, getting control of top mid, getting control of second mid, and moving into the apartments now. NIP are making the gamble, though. They're saying that this is going to be a B push. They have that extra man rotated over already. How is Ketrite going to throw this grenade that he's holding? He's just looking into the box with the smoke. I'm really confused. Because if they're going to leave Mike Killelli and Forrest over here, if Hellraisers come through with a full charge, then NIP's gamble of holding three people here is not going to work out too well. Markolov smoking off to one side there, and now they are going to go in for it here. This is going to be really tough on Mike Killelli and Forrest, without a doubt. Flashes rain in. Hellraisers now. The Glock train has left the station. And it's going to be Mike Lele trying to stop it with a good headshot there. Drops the bomb. Goes for a second one. Can't find it. And Doja's going to take him down. Now down in pit. Forest can't help out. That was pretty much all Mike Lele defending. And the bomb has been dropped as well here. Now Simple goes down over at Archway. And NIP are going to try for the retake. Hellraisers are not in great positions. But having this one guy up in apartments is going to make a crucial difference. Markolov could be the key man right now. Forest missing a couple of shots shooting his teammate Doja comes up with the second kill and again it's all on Markolov he gets the one kill but the bomb is being defused Markolov has to walk in here he can't stop it and NIP are gonna get the round in the corner Get right, will defuse the bomb, and NIP off to a good start on the second map, too. Uh, the sick, sick start here for NIP. That was a perfect retake from them. Hellraisers really had a, a great idea going into the round as well. Just full nades, full smoke round onto that A site, and they get the crucial kill on Michael Lele. Despite the fact that he did get one with him, take one with him, they still managed to get rid of him early and just leave Forrest in the pit. So Hellraisers had that site. They just needed to land the shots when Nip came knocking. So now... The upside of leaving Forrest in the pit is that they could get the bomb down early. The downside was they couldn't plan the standard position, which meant that Markolov's position in the end was much less powerful. If they killed Forrest initially, then they would have definitely planned it for standard, and then they would have been able to use Markolov much better. So, yeah, there's like a, a pro-con thing going on, and at the end it ended up kind of working against them, unfortunately. Yeah, it certainly did, but one thing to be taken away from that, Hellraisers did get that bomb plan, and we can see here now in this round they aren't investing that much money into it. They are expecting to buy in the third round. So NIP, knowing this as well, they don't really skimp on the gear this time around. One Pro 90 picked up on Garrett. This is actually something he's been doing quite a bit lately, so no surprise there from him, but still, going with that SMG can be risky. Let's see now. Freiburg going to have a field day here in Banana, though. Two kills for him, and that's the bomb dropped as well. Nothing going Hellraisers' way in this round. Well, he has, I think, maybe still and perhaps always will retain the uh, the title of King of Banana here. I think it's hard to take that away, isn't it? Um, so, yes, doing a fine job here in the in the anti-eco. That's all right. Get right with a P90, picking up one kill here and just dodging the flashbangs and going back for a little bit more action. It's exists, helping out with the last two there. And then IP end up just losing Freiburg to a bit of a straight headshot. So 2-0 for an IP. And... Um, I think if NIP have to feel really comfortable about this first half, I think they need to, to finish at something like 10-5 at least. That, I, I agree, definitely, wholeheartedly there. What's really interesting about this buy, and you, we'll be seeing it in just a moment here, but NIP, the way they shift their rifles around, get right, he saves the FAMAS, but then drops that to Freiburg and buys another Pro-90. So NIP, they have three rifles, an SMG, and a shotgun. This is a really interesting setup when they know that Hellraisers are going to be buying. There's no doubt in their minds. Hellraisers getting that first plant means they will have guns this round. NIP, confidence play here. Michael Lilly up in the apartment's not going to find anybody peeking in yet. Hellraiser's actually playing a very 
well, Hellraiser style, right? Going for the wall banks, taking their time. Can't expect them to make plays too quickly. Now, that's exactly what we're looking for. Now, the question is, and this is what we've been theory crafting about all along, is Blade going to be able to make the difference? Can he coordinate the timings good enough here to throw an IP off? Mike 7 up on Mike Kilele here. This is exactly the range at which you want to use this shotgun, and there's the opening to take down Angel. And a great start coming out here for the NIP team in the beginning here of the third round. Hellraiser is obviously a little bit annoyed at that because they just wanted to check apartments and clear it, and it's annoying that they lose it because this apartments play wasn't in like a, it wasn't part of the strategy or tactics coming out here from NIP. It was just a, a bit of a bump in the road almost. Exactly. It's just let's see if you can get anything done because Michael Lee can still fall back to a very favorable position. Oh. They're wired tight right now, Hellraiser. It's a simple just shot Kutcher in the back, and that is not supposed to happen. We lose Kutcher now. Forrest playing an aggressive position up on the pillar. Gets that kill, and now it's a two-man advantage. Make that a three-man advantage as Get Right begins to wake up, and he swaps up for that AK. That's what he was waiting for, Anders. He wants the rifle. Uh, well, he's playing, uh, you know, a tight game right now. He's getting the, the most out of everything, pretty much. Simple and Markolov are left, and Markolov is going to go down after picking up that first entry. So it's the only kill they have so far on the Hellraiser side, and time is going to run out here for Simple. And NIP know that Simple have this AWP as well. They've heard the shots. They know that he's saving it. And at this point, it's also not a huge deal if they let him live with it because it's really just going to be him. There's not going to be enough money here for Hellraisers to get a full buy-in behind this. It's just going to be this Simple show pretty much with this AWP, whereas NIP fully equipped once again, not really wasting any time here. Well, the, the, the interesting was awkward, thing though. is that Hellraisers actually have to, they have to save this rifle again because Simple didn't get any money for obviously you know, surviving that round, so he has to stay alive even more. Grenade down the middle, a double grenade, and Simple is left on eight health. Now that is incredibly lucky for Simple, actually. I was pretty much, when I saw those nades coming, I'm like, okay, he's gone, and that's pretty much the worst luck possible there for Hellraisers. At least they could save his AWP to use, but they lose the man with Kevlar. Now Simple has to play even more careful. Only eight points of health. You can sneeze on him and he'd be gone. The fourth round. It's been a... I can't even remember the last time I've seen NIP play a game that has looked convincing for them. It feels like even when they win recently, it's been... It's a always struggle. been... Yeah, it's been a struggle. You always wonder, all right, they won, but, you know, it could, could have gone either way. So uh, it's kind of interesting to see NIP back at this level. Um, but a little bit too soon to call here. Only the fourth round up. I'm wondering if they are going to risk the AWP, though, because they losing that now would mean that the rest of Hellraisers can buy, but Simple can't. And that's, a, that's an awful position to be in. Especially when you want him to have that expensive rifle. They're actually going to try and flush Exist out of here. Check the corner. He is gone. Exist having a field day. Two kills for him. Peeking out onto Short. Goes for the spray. And he is still alive. And that's the important part here. Markoloff will find Forrest. But NIP have not lost control of the situation quite yet. Although Hellraisers are pushing up on Short. Dangerously close. But hello, Michaelele. Two kills from him. And that's just Doja now going to not be able to get the plant. Great job there. Two really quick pistol kills for Mike Kelly, and then Exist coming in with a triple in total. He's doing a reverse James Bond at zero, or so seven zero and zero at the moment. So pretty nice ratio going into the fifth round. Now we're gonna have to see if Hellraisers can to show us something here. And they lost the AWP. So like we predicted, it's it's just a pistol for simple. Can't afford anything else because he survived that one round. I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen. I really want to see Hellraisers do something interesting, but Michael Lele, simple, couldn't even make it into the trenches there as he just gets picked off midair. Not the best start. That was really impressive by Michael Lele, landing that kind of shot right there, run and gun. That was almost, I had to blink and rub my eyes and be like, Kenny, is that you? Like, <laughs> Michael Lele looking pretty warmed up here with the AWP. But that is certainly going to hurt Hellraisers because simple had a lot of nades on him as well. Maybe he didn't have a gun, but those nades could have gone towards taking a site, towards making it an after plan scenario better for Hellraisers. Now they lose that option. So let's see what Hellraisers are capable of here. Angel waking up, takes out Forrest once again, punishing him for using that forward position. So this is going to get a little hairy here, but NIP have already rotated the extra man over. So if Hellraisers commit, this could go south. And Michael Ede still here with the op. There's a good pick off there on Angel. He's going to be wrapped around though. Kucha with a great double opening, taking down Mike Kelly and Exist both. And this should be a bomb plant for Hellraisers. They actually plant inside the site again, but this time it's a little bit more reasonable because they have two people down in pit. So they have a very strong after plant position here for Hellraisers. And unless they make big mistakes, NIP should not be able to come in and retake this bomb site at all. I mean, they do have the money on NIP's side to try and go for it. They could probably rebuy, but. They
They don't have infinite amounts of money, so they got to be careful as well. Good for uh, Molotov in there. And then IP, they're actually going to try this. Freiburg and get right. They have the confidence for it, and they're going to get shot down. That's a triple kill from Kucha now. Get right all alone here, one on three. Trying to keep them in the bomb site. Trying to do the damage so that they'll blow up with the bomb. And he's going to be semi-successful. One of them dies, but two survive. And a nice triple kill from Kucha. Great round. Yeah, and at that point, Hellraisers, they're fine with giving up rifles. They'll take that fight any day with NIP because they are just interested in getting rounds on the board at this point. They will have enough money to buy in the next round as well. This was a bit awkward here because it looked like Michaelele and Exist, they actually lined up on that side as well, which made Kucha's life really easy when it came to clearing it. You know, two birds with one stone. So that was a bit... Could be that hiccup, right, with NIP still trying to work out exactly how they rotate around now that they have this op to play with. So we'll see if NIP are going to be able to bounce back now. No AWP for Michael this time. He goes back to the Swag 7. It's just going to be four rifles here for the Ninjas. And yeah, not that impressive, but it might be all right anyway. They have two smokes left as they've uh, got still a minute and 10 seconds left on the clock. So they've got to be careful they don't use all those smokes too soon in the round, because that's obviously going to be a problem if they do. Molotov kind of, I think, was supposed to check out the bedroom, but... Um, in the end, they make sure there's nobody in apartments, which is Hellraiser has actually been trying to do every single round, and they've been losing players doing it a lot as well. But this time, they're not going to find anybody from NIP up there. And let's see what it is Hellraisers have in mind once they have the apartments, because obviously it does give you more map control, and then it means you can limit some of the information that the CT side might otherwise get. So now they've done that much. Let's see how they move on. I'm curious. They have quite a bit of gear as well, but that perfect timing on the smoke on short is going to slow them down somewhat. 35 seconds left on this clock. This is actually starting to get a bit awkward here for Hellraisers. If they wait much longer than this, they're going to have no room for error when they try and take this site. One single mistake could cost them the round. So it's going to come down now to Exist holding at Arch. Simple right around the corner, and Simple gets the entry fag. Exist is gone off Arch, and now it's all down to Forest, who gets flashed out, but Doja takes him out. Nothing is working for the Ninjas. Great job on Hellraisers. Makulov is going to pick off my kill. And that's a clean entrance, perfect execution. They've got seven seconds left as the bomb goes down. Freiburg and get right left here. I mean, if now we are watching this, and I bet they are, you know, they're going to be so happy, you know, pushing it. 35 seconds is, that's oceans of time for Navi. They're going to be like, oh, you guys could wait at least another 15 seconds before you even thought about pushing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just a very CIS style way of playing. It's very, that's just particular to that region, playing that slowly. And it's kind of cool to see it uh, working out for them as well. So NIP, these two rifles, if they're going to save both of them, that's all they're going to have for the upcoming round. Hellraisers have bounced right back into this game. Uh, this is starting to look very scary here for an IP, I imagine. Now an Angel finds the pick on Freiburg. Freiburg, rare slip up on his part. That's going to get punished right there. And this is definitely not looking good here for Ninjas in pajamas. Hellraiser starting to get some momentum on this T side. They've got a little bit of bank to play with as well. And most importantly now, Simple has got that AWP, and he's got a guarantee of an AWP in the next round. So NIP, it's starting to look a little grim here just because they are on, on eco round. They have one rifle to play with. Everybody else is on pistols. And when you're this early on in the half, like we said at the beginning, Hellraisers are only looking to get around five rounds out of this T-half, and they're about to get up onto three. This is really scary right now for the CT side. Yeah, it is. It is. I think Hellraisers need to be stopped at, at five rounds. I think if they get more than five rounds in this first half, Hellraisers, that's where things start to get really complicated for the NIP team. And I love seeing Hellraisers buying all these Molotovs just to use them wherever they can. This time they check the bedroom with one of them. And they still have two more left. They can check car, they can check the ninja corner, which is what we're seeing Simple doing right here. And it's just a really sensible use of grenades. It's obviously hard to do if you don't have the economy for it, but they do right now. So they can afford to throw away those $400 grenades as much as they want. Simple, moving up, just being absolutely sure, a little bit paranoid even. Maybe someone was going to survive in the fire for a minute. Safe and sorry right now, but then Simple lands the headshot on Michael Lele. Oh, that was actually Coacher taking the shot first, so good job there by Coacher. It's actually going to be Angel getting teamed up on short, but Simple steps in, takes out Forrest, and this is now turning into Hellraiser's kind of steamrolling an IP. Get right is alive in pit, though, with that M4, but he's been spotted. They know that he's here. Still gets the headshot. He doesn't manage to stop the plant, though. Markaloff, perfect timing from him, drops the pain, and this is now looking like Hellraiser's are in control. What is Simple <laughs> trying to do? I'm getting ahead of myself. I was not expecting Simple to try and knife Freiburg there. I think... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not fluid in um, 
in Counter-Strike body language, but I think when you crouch with the knife out, it says one-on-one -on -one fight me, bro. I think that's, <laughs> that's what that means on an international level. And um, that was just not something Freiburg was up for. So the eighth round is coming up. Bit of a strange situation. And now Hellraiser's went upping themselves, buying another Molotov. That's four in this round. And, you know, somewhere inside me, I'm just thinking, are we going to see that? Are we going to see that firebomb tactic on B? Are we going to be able to see them actually try and burn it out? Because they've been very mid-centric right now. Hellraisers, they keep going middle. They keep going for the A bomb sign. It's been working all right. So why? I mean, they could just try and keep it up until NIP come up with the answer, or they could try and switch it up before then and then go for B. We'll have to find out. It looks like it's still A that's on uh, Hellraisers' minds. Exactly right. You know, again, that that whole theory of you know, if it's working, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. But that's actually going to be a bit of a rough start. Forrest waking up in pit, and he's dropped the bomb on the balcony as well. Hellraisers are now committed to this site. They have to get that pack back. Using the Molotovs now to try and create an opening, but Forrest lives, and this is now looking pretty steep here for Hellraisers. They're getting caught out on short. Doja and Simple, though, coming right back into it, getting key frags, and then you lose Forrest as well. Oh, wow, what a turnaround from Hellraisers. They've turned it into a 2 on 2 and they're going to be able to throw the bomb over the railing there. Angel wants to pick it up. He's got to be careful, and he's going to plant safely inside the site. They really don't want to get picked off right here, Angel. With the bomb plant, Simple covering him down from pit with that AWP, and now NIP have to retake. They currently do not have a diffuse kit picked up, so they can't spend all the time in the world here. Simple misses a flick. He's going to go aggressive one on two, and Freiburg, he gets both the kills coming into it, and NIP are going to win the round. Very important. They would have had to eco if they would lost this round, and now they just managed to keep themselves in the first half here. Uh, just a I mean, crucial play. That is definitely going to put you a little bit back on your heels there. It was a little bit too hard, especially when you're thinking you had, you had the numbers game. You had the bomb up on the balcony. Everything was going wrong for Hellraisers, and somehow it comes down to that close of a finish. So uh, NIP, man, they really do need to, to start looking to lock down these sites. And I'm curious to see now we should actually have the AWP for Michaelele. There it is. Okay, so they do actually have the sniper rifle to play with. Michaelele, it's his time to shine once again. I mean, he's still sitting on seven frags, but he has slowed down somewhat since uh, Nip hit that bumpy road. And there it's you a good go. Flick. Doja goes down. Michaelele confident in his ability to walk up there. And then right after the smoke goes down, actually, it could have been a bit of a telltale from Hellraiser's point of view that there was no smoke when they get there, because that smoke that lands right there at the top of Banana is, has just become a main staple of how NIP hold the Banana now. In the past, they'd smoked the bottom, but they've changed quite uh, drastically to holding up here. So the fact that that never goes down should be an indication that something else is going on for the Hellraiser side. Um, we'll have to see if they can read that a little bit better. We're in the ninth round, so they have time to do it still. But that, that's got to be a strong signal for Hellraisers. They've been doing well on A. As soon as they even try to go B, they instantly get shut down. That's got to be frustrating. Oh, certainly, especially. I mean, now, especially when, you know, they get shut down on A, that last round, it starts to put a little doubt in their mind. If they can't go to B, the things are going to get a bit tough here for Hellraisers. So Simple has that AWP, though, so we'll see if he can actually start landing a shot here to create an opening. But NIP also playing very passively. Forrest, just as I say that, is going to decide to peek for information, which is a little bit... Stepping out there, but still, Flash goes in, he's going to go for the peak. Nothing gone, given there to Hellraisers, though. Angel, look at this corner. This is so good. If he can catch Get Right, that's going to be the, almost the perfect opening. It'll leave Freiburg alone on the bomb site for a little while. Molotov goes up here, but Get Right's going to pick up the first kill. Can't get the second one. Angel has the timing down right. It's still not done here. There is only 10 seconds. Unless they kill Freiburg instantly, it's not going to work out. Freiburg pre-fires. Six seconds, five seconds. They need that bomb plan right here. It's a two on three, and there it is. Hellraiser's come through. Exist goes down. Now it's a two on two, and this would be such a steal if they won it. Down to the wire. Hellraiser's are playing a tight and close game right now, but it seems almost like perfection. They've narrowly calculated that this is going to work out, and this retake is not easy for NIP. They have an AWP. They finally picked up a kit there on Michael Lele. And Markov is going to go down. It's all on Kucha. He gets found as well, and the retake happens. Michael Lele Fusing and NIP getting a sixth round. So close. So close. Forrest, that was a huge frag. Markloff in particular was going to be the linchpin because, of course, NIP, they're going to be hunting for that man in the back of the corner. And they could be thinking it's a new box, back of the corner, crossfire standard, what you see. The fact that Markloff gets taken out so early there by Forrest is huge. They could then collapse onto the site and find the remaining man. That was all Forrest right there. So huge plays coming in now on, the, on an individual level for NIP. Michael Ailey and Forrest both stepping up their game, which is going to be crucial for them going forward. But Hellraisers, they have enough money for yet another buy. It just seems like they have so much in the bank that they are able to just keep the pressure up on NIP now. 
for so long. This actually should be a scenario now where Hellraiser's, it's, it, they have to win this round or they will be going. So here it is. Can NIP actually get a little bit of breathing room here in the mid of the half? And it would be really good for them. You're absolutely right, because um, Hellraisers won't be able to buy this upcoming round. They don't have the loss bonus. They don't have the money for it either. Mike Kelly missing a lot of shots, and he's down to eight health. So a pretty good opening for Hellraisers. They make their way towards Library and through Quad as well. Exist spraying down will take up Kucher. And they've done a lot of damage to Angel and Simple as well. They're very low on health right here. Forrest wants to get up out of the pit, up into the graveyard. He's looking for the opening kill, hitting nothing but the railing. And Mike Killelli is going to land the shot finally. It's a three on three. Bomb goes down. And pretty decent position for Hellraisers. Up in the graveyard is really the most important one here. Angel, very little health, but he could find the opening frag. He's not going to. Forrest, he picks up two kills almost instantaneously. And it's going to be down to Markolov in the corner. He gets the one. He keeps spraying. Forrest survives. And it's going to be the triple with the time for the defuse as well. What a play. Forrest coming up out of the pit. Yeah, but you can see the smile there. A little bit of the troll coming in there from Patrick. But Forrest, man, that was all Forrest. But once again, two back-to-back -back huge rounds for him. But this kill right here, taking out Simple. He knew somebody was up in Graveyard as well. He gets that one. But this right here, doesn't spray, doesn't lose his cool. Couple shots in, resets, couple shots, gets the job done. That was just classic Forest, a thing of beauty. And now Hellraiser's actually forced it up. That bomb plant was just enough, the $800 bonus, and Hellraiser's just, you know, they realize, oh, we can get three Galil's, one eight cannons. He said, that's enough, we'll go for it here. And they are feeling, you know, they know NIP are pressure. The Swedes have absolutely no money. If Hellraiser's make this gamble work, they're going to pretty much secure the first half for themselves. They'll be fine. Great grenade training, and Michael Killer missing the shot. Freiburg in the corner gets down. What an entrance from Angel. That's what they need. If they speed up now, well, they might be uh, actually running into Geraint, but they could almost have caught Michael Lele then. Smoke goes off as well, and Hellraiser's up. Trying to play this patiently. The timing is off by a millisecond there, and the grenade won't do anything. They're going to leave one person up here, and what are they going to do with the rest? It seems like they want to go fishing here. The question is, can they find Forrest, who's holding just locked onto that site? And IP are convinced that this is going to be a B play. However, they've rotated three guys over to hold this site solidly. Look at this, three overlapping fields of fire. This is looking pretty brutal if Hellraisers has tried to bust through. But with 40 seconds left, this is a lifetime for Hellraisers. They are still feeling like if they can catch somebody off guard here on this map, this could be big because Nip do need to go for a bit of a gamble being a man down like this. Well, the bomb is out here. If NIP get a hold of it, but Simple will find the headshot. Good job. They really can't let go of the bomb at this point. Exist waiting up here with the Max 7. It's going to take down Doja. And I think Hellraiser is going to make a one for it with 18 seconds left. It's a bit of a marathon, actually. The fact is that Forrest could win this round for his team just by killing one person here. This is down to the wire. They come around the corner. Forrest is there. He picks up the double. It's only going to be eight seconds left here. And the bomb plant will happen. It's a two-on-one. Exist is not going to be there in time. What a close call. And now Exist has to try and clutch it. He sprays down here. He gets the first kill. He's got the double now. He looks for one more. Markov with the perfect headshot to finish the round and Hellraiser make it work. That bomb plant had one second on it and it would have been too late. Incredible. Split second. Just a split second there. Forrest, he nearly did it. If it was a split second difference, Hellraiser did not get that bomb plant and Forrest yet again was going to be the king. He did give his team a strong fighting chance but it exists there towards the end. Just couldn't quite land the spray fast enough to get the job done. That was just anybody's round, it seemed. Hellraisers, this is really close. And because of how much damage they've been doing to Nip round after round, Nip are now on eco here. Hellraisers, they could potentially get up onto five rounds. And from there on out, life gets very difficult here for NIP going into the second half. Hellraisers are excellent on their CT side as well here. Five is enough. Five that's, is definitely that's enough. That's the bottom line here. This is definitely very tricky. And you're right, they've, they've just stacked up in the B bomb site. Again, they're crossing their fingers and hoping that Hellraiser is going to make a mistake, but the calls that come out, the mid-round calls, and then this round it was obviously very late in the round, but still, um, just getting the getting the right choice to go to a bomb site is the essence of playing in the T-side Inferno, and it's so hard. It's such a hard skill to accomplish, uh, making sure you, you gather whatever information you have. When did you last see someone? Where have the smoke's grown up? You've heard anyone walking, and what do you know about the enemy team? You put all that into your mind, and you have to make a decision in a very short amount of time. It's not easy, but Hellways have done a really good job of doing exactly that in the first uh, half, so, in, yeah, first half so far. Well, guess what? This may be Christmas early here for NIP. It's a stack. 
No CZ, just one CZ picked up on Exist, but still. A couple P250s, a couple P2Ks. Hellraisers could potentially be running into the blender here. They're going to walk right into a five-man stack on the B site. And Hellraisers can, I mean, look at how patient Nip are playing it. They clear out the first two guys, but then it's down to the remaining three here. And IP doing the damage force. He's going to find a frag, and Exist lines them up, but he runs out of bullets. Now he's actually got the Galil, but he runs out of bullets. The two, what is happening? So close. Exist, if he had 10 more bullets in that Galil, he could have eviscerated the whole push. How did nobody get stabbed in all that smoke? I think everyone had a knife out at some point, and yet it was the CZ-75 that ended it, and NIP have such a tough choice to make here. I mean, it's not really a choice because if they let Hellraisers get more rounds, this first half is not looking good for them. At the same point in time, now they force it up with two Formasas, one M one no, two M4s, and one from one Max Seven, and it's not exactly great, is it? It's not exactly. I mean, it is pushing it. They still get the smokes. They still have the smokes to play with NIP. So the gear is there, but the firepower is somewhat lacking. And Hellraisers, they don't have the AWP for simple once again. Actually, Angel taking a hit, only going for a CZ here. So they're a little bit strapped for cash as well. This is a crucial round for NIP now. This is a bit of a gamble from them. They really want to stop Hellraisers at five rounds. So going for this buy is basically the statement. NIP are like, this is the line that you do not cross, Hellraisers. If you cross it, it's going to be rough. However, if they lose this round, NIP, this is not looking good for them. No, this is what Hellraisers need to get us onto that third map right now. And they are looking for it. It will be overpass if it happens. And IP were off to a solid start in this half, but Hellraisers have really shown them that they, they're not going to exit the quarterfinals just yet. They want to fight on. Mike Hillel waiting inside with the Max 7. Forrest coming out of the pit. M4 in hand, just putting a little bit of damage on through. But now Hellraisers have got a lot of grenades to try and see if they can get in here. Again, the clock is running low as we've got 25 seconds left currently. Exist is waiting on over. He's going to hear a couple of people running through Arch with a bomb. Where are they going to go with this? They must be wrapping a rack around to AI, I assume, because there's not going to be that much time left. And there's the opening on Exist. Great start here for Hellraisers. Forrest is going to pick up the one headshot on Kucha. Now they're being wrapped in around Mike Kelly with the Max 7 in the background. Forrest with the kill on Dosha, and it's down to Markov. One on four here. NIP managed to remedy the situation as Forrest picks up the last headshot to take down Markov. That looked like Hellraisers had them boxed in. They clear out library, they rotate around and pins in the, the remaining NIP members, and somehow they fight their way out. Michael Ele, man, with that swag. We weren't watching from his point of view, but that swag seven just saved it, because if he goes down, if he only takes one, Forrest is then done for. He is gone. He's getting pincered in on, and he is not holding past that first frag. So that was so just incredibly important that Michael Ele lands those two kills there for NIP. And once again, individual play making such a huge difference for the ninjas. Individual players stepping up for them at times of need, and they really are making it happen here. Eight rounds on the board now for Ninjas in Pajamas. Two rounds remaining in the half, and they really are, they really do need to pick up the remaining two. Hellraisers may give them a shot at it too here, seeing as how it's a bit of a mixed buy from Hell. Yeah, they've calculated that we can really buy something in the last round. Anyway, what an opening. Angel comes on through, keeps spraying madly, just covering all the angles. And there's a follow-up opening on Kucha. Takes that kill and drops Forrest. It's a three-on-three. -three, and Mike Kelly taking a fight. It's going to come out on top against Simple Ghost for a little bit more. But Angel, he wants revenge for his fallen teammate. And he's going to get it too. Now we can finally put the bomb down. A little bit of peace here. It's still two-on-two. -two, and NIP really have the advantage because Kucha doesn't have body armor, whereas both NIP members have. And they're so close to the bomb. Side. They have the kits as well. Grenades raining on in. Hellraisers. This is a do or die moment for them. If they win this round, they'll have a great first half on their hands. Freiburg charges in, gets the first kill. Kuchis there. He misses the shot. A huge mistake. And now Get Right will finish the round and NIP will win it after all. And once again, I mean, you guys can see how this story is developing again there. Kucher in that scenario, he had get right dead to rights, and he couldn't get it done. Freiburg at that position now has to hunt him in the pit, and that just would not happen unless Freiburg could hit one of the sickest shots of his life. That play right here by Kucher. That right there, this, this is really it right here. Hellraisers, they had that round within their hands, within their grasp, and they couldn't quite do it. Sometimes you step up and it, you do secure the clutch, and sometimes it just doesn't happen. Now Ninjas in Pajamas, they have all of the money. They have a full buy going into it. Hellraisers as well. And this is where it all gets settled for the first half. 15th round here. There's a big difference between 10-5 and 9-6. And I think Nip going into their T side need every advantage they can get.
Yes, I think I think a 10-5 NIP uh, have a real shot of doing it if they win the pistol round. If they lose the pistol round, Hellraisers have a really, really good chance, even at 10-5, of bringing it all the way back. So it's going to be a little bit tricky. Right now, again, Hellraiser's emphasizing on um, an emphasis on just clearing out this apartment area, just making sure no one's up there. And NIP are playing really defensively all across the map. Markolov is going to be checking every corner. Where do we go? There's a bit of the pop flash to take a peek at long. Nip holding pretty far back, actually. A bit passive on this A side, just playing the angles on B side as well, not really pushing into Banana. Just going for standard as could be. Question is now, where exactly do Hellraiser decide to go with this? They do use the, mo the Molotov to clear out the corner. Michael Ayla waiting in Little Pit. This is his big time to shine here. If he can land the shot, this would be crucial. Simple backing him up with the AWP right behind Doja. And Michael Ayla is going to spray it down. They line up and he's going to take both the kills. Now he's got the C set 75 out. He's got 12 health. He's trapped in here. He needs a little bit of backup, and it's coming for him as well. But the backup dies immediately. Kucha goes down next to Get Right, who sprays through the box. It's just Angel left. One on three. He gets the first, but not the second. Angel goes down, and Get Right's going to finish the round here. It will be 10 to 5. Favor of NIP, but I would say this is a very fair result for both teams. This is not really decisively in NIP's favor. Hellraisers have a good chance of being able to bring this back. But that was unfortunate here for Hellraisers. Mike Hillary just hitting the perfect uh, angle there. Now they hit perfect spray and them lining it up. It was a gift. It was a gift put in. And then him not peeking out from Little Pit and getting picked up. Hellraisers constantly had to worry about him, and that bought time for the rotation to come in then as well from the mates on B. So Hellraisers, that was, again, a, such a close round to decide it all here. 10-5 now going into the second half, and I think you're right, Anders. I mean, this is still anybody's round. If Hellraisers pick up the pistol, they just need to get over one buy round, and they're looking at a tie scenario here with NIP. If NIP can pick up the pistol, they can get up to 13 rounds before things start to get hairy for them. So this is big. And Michael Ayla actually doing a lot of the talking here during the pause. So this is interesting. He really uh, expressing himself here. The latest member in the NIP lineup as well, replacing Piflaron. Yeah, you're right. I was actually wondering if there was going to be like a, you know, a cool down period for him in the beginning where he wasn't going to be that that vocal. Just, you're on a new team and you're playing with some, some fairly legendary people as well. So maybe you are going to be a little bit intimidated. But that's probably good that he's that he's actually being active from the very start, and uh, maybe NIP have, have taken some steps to try and make sure that he was feeling as, as you know part of them and not as like a, a fifth wheel on on that on that uh, vehicle. Second half coming up, I'm kind of curious to see what NIP are going to do if they're going to play it uh, slowly or if they're going to go for something a little bit more uh, you know crazy. Because on the second half pistol on the on Dust Two. They did try to push pretty aggressively, and obviously then they had a really big lead, whereas now they kind of don't. So maybe that's going to spark them, you know, playing a little bit more safely on the terrorist side, just not, not too many crazy risks. Well, as we count down into the second half, we're about to find out, and I think looking at what they're going to buy is going to tell us a lot of what they have in mind here. If there's a lot of Kevlar, we could see that run and gun sort of brute force strat coming out. But I mean, in this first half, or at least in the first half pistol, both teams opted for a lot of nades, a lot of gear. So we'll have to see if that's going to repeat itself here going into the second half. What do Nip have in store for us here? But guys, it is time here. Nip potentially on the edge of making it into the semifinals of DreamHack Winter. Hellraiser's battling for their tournament life. Let's make some noise. Let's get into it. All right. And there's the trophy as well. Glorious trophy, actually. All right, it's quite a trophy, Anders. It's pretty big. You have to you have to find a designated person on your and team who can actually it. lift that trophy. You know, you can't just get anybody to do it. So uh, you know, you need you need the right person. You know, Pasha. So you're saying Exist shouldn't lift that trophy? Yeah, and, you know, get Freiburg to do it. He's got the strength for it. That's it. Oh, but we, it looks like we have actually a bit of a pause coming in here, guys. So we'll see. What needs to get sorted? This could actually be uh, also one of the. They're allowed to have a pause per match as well. So. This could actually be a tactical pause coming in because Blade is doing quite a bit of talking right now with Hellraisers. They may be trying to iron out some final points going into the second half. I mean, this is crucial right here, but it looks like the pause has ended. We're ticking down towards this second half pistol. And now we see exactly what we have in store for us here. And it is quite a bit, uh, quite a few nades, actually. Yeah, and uh, Seuss on Simple. He actually bought a stun gun in the pistol round of uh, a quarterfinals here for a major tournament. That is into our oh, Simple. Did he go? Did he drop? What? Did it disappear? Oh. I have no idea what just happened. I'm assuming that's like a hot bug then. All right. No Seuss. That would have been fun, though. 
What's really interesting, Doja must have dropped simple that CZ. Yeah. Because Doja had one smoke, but he's on a P2K still, so that is very interesting here. And like Simple has CZ and Kit, yeah, so exactly. something happened. Kucha with the opening kill, and Simple following up, looking good for Hellraisers. But Markolov will go down in IP, charging through, and the headshot on Kucha is going to send him cowering back into the construction area. Forrest will take a kill as well and goes for a little bit more. NIP powering through, he steals that pistol. Seven bullets and Forrest, that's now a triple kill. He's on seven health, the bomb is down as well. Exists in the background, getting caught by Doja here and it's a 2-1-2 Hellraisers. They need to clear out these NIP members, but they cannot. Forrest now at a quad kill. He fakes it once, Doja, but Forrest is looking for the ace and he picks it up. He decimates the Hellraisers lineup and NIP now well on their way to the semi-finals. That is a big round. That is a big start right there. The team is getting hype as well. Freiburg is smiling at everybody. Grins on their faces because this is the perfect start for NIP going into this second half. They lock it down. They get that T-side start. They get the guns on their side. Now on the first map, it was definitely Get Right carrying the team through. He did such a fine job. He really had a, an incredible performance. And Mike Lely also stepping up with the AWP. But Get Right was one of the main engines. Right now, Forrest is dropping 23 kills in just 17 rounds. That is pretty damn good at the moment. And Hellraisers, they are definitely not out of it. But losing that pistol round is going to be frustrating. And you wonder how they're going to respond to it. If they save this one or the next one, it's going to make it 12-5 until they can really start stepping up with it. And they haven't bought any armor in this round. Mm -hmm. They haven't exactly. I think they're really just going to be investing in that big uh, 19th round. They want to get that buy. They want to get that buy on the board when they have a lot of money to get the AWP, to get the expensive rifles and to have all of the gear, all of the gear. Because Hellraiser is basically, at that point, it's th this is the line where it ends for NIP. As far as this round is concerned, Hellraiser's pre playing pretty far back, actually. Bit of a B stack on their side as well, although they do have one guy lurking in CT. Three guys on that B side, and Ip make the right call. They're going straight up short, straight onto this A site. They have no idea that Simple is waiting here, but Exist is covering Boiler, watching their backs, and that's a very clean... There's a, that's a very clean bomb plant for NIP. No issues at all. A good call to end up uh, at the safe bomb site, and a uh, good job on Exist just making sure that Simple wasn't going to be able to sneak up behind them somehow. So this should be all right. Freiburg on an adventure with the MAG-10 as well. Trying to see if he could find anybody. Well, this would be pretty big with the MAG-10 actually. This is going to pick up that frag, however. And now they are just on the hunt looking for these frags. They are hungry for money right now. Freiburg is about to walk into construction as well. Michael Lillis here with his bison. Going to check the car. Yes, he does. Turns back and picks up the kill. Freiburg as well getting one in the meantime. And it's just Kocher and not a single member of Hellraisers lives through that round. They are definitely bent on making sure that Hellraisers spend money in the next round here. They do not want them to save a dime. Well, Freiburg, on the other hand, up to 5,400 at the beginning of that round just from getting the, uh, the, the money bonus from that MAC-10, so that's not at all bad. So 12 to 5, and now currently the scoreline, and Hellraisers investing in a couple of grenades in the round like this. I think that's a pretty good idea. Decent, decent choice on their part. Once again, you know, this is going to make Nip sweat a little bit, make them wonder, but at the end of the day, Nip playing very carefully together, pairing up as well, and I do like to see that detail there from NIP, putting two guys in banana rather than just the one. You don't want to give Hellraisers an opportunity to jump one of your teammates and take their rifle away and then be able to use that against you. So NIP really just playing this very carefully, watching each other's backs and making sure that if a gun does get dropped, Hellraisers aren't going to be able to run away with it. But it does look like NIP want to gear up for that B play eventually here. The bomb is making its way up banana. It's quiet in mid, although they are kind of hunting around here. I like the fact that NIP are, are playing this carefully in the anti eco just because you don't want to throw this one away. That would be devastating. Freiburg already been shot down pretty low, but Mike Killier with a good opening here. The Bison coming out on top twice now against Hellraisers, and that's going to be the bomb plant end. Pretty much a safe round from here on out from NIP. Mag 10 on Freiburg, and he gets the two kills as well. Cheeky play at the bottom of Banana, leaving Doja as the last man standing here. One on five, uh, and he's going to get found eventually. No time to reload. And that's now 9,000 on Freiburg going into the uh, fourth round of the second half right now. Yeah, that's a sick amount of money to have right there. They're going to be dropping those SMGs, picking up those rifles, and now they have a pretty healthy cushion going into it because Michael has eight grand as well. That is silly. 
A very nice control here by Freiber, getting the job done, holding down Banana for NIP. But this is the big round, guys. 19th round, Hellraiser's their first buy round, and there is no AWP for Simple. It's just M4s and nades across the board here. Oh, and that's unlucky. He actually hit the light post. Yeah, a bit of a shame there for the Hellraiser's team. They need this round, and they need all the rounds from here on out. They can't make really almost any mistakes at this point. They gotta see if they can find a way to shut NIP down, but the confidence of the Swedish team has been just uh, flowing uh, pretty much all around, and, and they, gotta, they gotta find a way to break that somehow. They need to silence the crowd, and they need to make sure that NIP just uh, stop uh, trusting themselves so much. Exactly. If they can get that, I mean, basically, they need to throw Forrest down and stomp him. They can't let Forrest continue to manhandle him, and Freiburg is starting to get some momentum as well, and that is scary. That combo, like on Dust2, when those two guys are leading the charge for Nip, Nip look unstoppable. So they need to manage to take one of those play pieces off the board here. It looks like Hellraiser's... I think Doja could. probably could body slam Forrest if it came to it. I think there aren't a whole lot of people that would stop Doja from body slamming them, but Forrest is not interested in that. He clips Angel's wings, and now he is doing a pretty good job. What? He finds the headshot on Doja. He's single-handedly clearing the A-side. Forrest is on fire right now. Another kill goes in. But in the meantime, his teammates have run to the B-side with the remaining defenses for Hellraisers. This has actually turned completely around. Yeah, because the bomb is over here. There's only 15 seconds left. They need to clear this bomb site. Hellraisers have almost no health left. They just need a few bullets, and that's going to seal the round for NIP. But they can't run out of time here. Six, five seconds. There's the bomb plant attempted. Could they hear it? I think the smoke actually blocked the sound. The bomb goes down with two seconds left, and that's going to be it. Get right cleans it up. What a performance here. Forest. Complete monster at the moment, 26 kills. And this is looking perfect for NIP at this point because the Hellraisers, they have no money. They're in middling, floating around 3,000, going into keeping Nip off of match point. But this is big here by Forrest. I mean, you know, speak of the devil, we're, talking, we're singing his praises and he delivers perfectly right here on this A site. What's crazy is that NIP, this was supposed to be a diversion. He was just supposed to keep a couple members here for Hellraisers while his teammates crashed onto the B site. Just incredible individual performance coming out from Forrest right now. But this is it. I mean, look, the, the force buy out of Hellraisers. They're just doing whatever they can to keep Nip off that final match. Yeah, and I, I, I can't be 100% sure, but I think the sound of the smoke actually covered the sound of the bomb going down, which is such a big difference, because if, if Hellraisers just blast through the smoke at that point because they hear that beep beep sound, that's, make, that, that's it. The round is pretty much over. But um, it doesn't turn out that way. This will be incredible. Hellraisers, they were looking to make the comeback happen on the second half, and... I feel almost quite sure they could actually make it, but um, NIP, they had a decisive victory on Dust2. They're looking to do it on the second map here, and that would land them right in the semifinals of another major tournament. The fourth one in a row for them where they're at least going to go to the semis. Oh, but Markolov, he's not interested in letting that happen. Double spray down at the top of Banana, and Nip all of a sudden get rocked a little bit. Forrest decides to step in and join the party, however. It takes out Angel on Speedway. It just goes hoofing through. This is going to be a pincer movement onto this B site, but the smokes are down, and Markolov is still alive. A third frag for him. Oh, amazing play for Markolov right here. It's going to be a four on two. Forrest trying to get in. He will finally take down, or Gerai will take down Markolov. And Gerai follow up with a shot there. That's Kucha going down. Now it's a two on two, but Doja with the perfect timing. And that should seal the round. Forrest, he may have been a monster today, but this one on two should not be winnable for him. They should be able to coordinate this well enough. He goes for the straight plant, and Doja's there to pick it up. Solid play from Hellraisers, and especially Markolov picking up that triple kill. And he's also at 13, so he's not really focused. It's not like anybody on Hellraiser is underperforming at this point in time. They're all pretty much even on the scoreboard. Whereas, uh, I mean, the same is true for NIP. Nobody's lacking sort of drastically behind. Mm -hmm. It's 14 to 6 right here. Hellraiser just could make this comeback work, but it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. It's the long journey. At this point, all Hellraiser is doing, they're zeroed in on one round at a time. They just have to take it one step at a time, because if they think of the total number of rounds they need to run it back, it's a huge amount. It's a long journey ahead. But, you know, if they just think about each step on that journey instead, it could work out. NIP, though, they are not to be deterred. Freiburg has taken some initial damage to start things off, but they are clearing the map very methodically here, Nip, taking their time, getting as much control as they can before they decide where they want to go. Because as far as it looks right now, Hellraisers, they are not too interested in peeking to give Nip an entry. You know, they're playing it defensively at the moment, which is maybe not such a bad idea. You know, you run into Forest and land some of those headshots. That's what you don't want to happen. 
And um, still got a couple of Molotovs here on the Hellraiser side. NIP wanting to take this mid control. They're going to clear out really easily towards Quad here. I think Forrest may have spotted the guy up on Balcony. He's just going to call that out to his teammates. And looks like NIP have decided actually the B-bomb side is a much better place to hang out. Good opening here from Get Right. Can they hold B? That's the only thing Hellraisers have to accomplish right now. They'll be all right. 30 seconds left. And IP still making a little bit of noise, just keeping these two people from Hellraisers in this bomb site. But now it's going to be the showdown. Kucha and Markolov holding over at the B bomb site, and this is everything for them. Doja goes down, but it's still all about the B bomb site right now. Markolov back a new box. This straight headshot, simple finds the kill. He has to stay alive here. Markolov, he does a lot of damage. That pistol is not going to be enough. And simple now, one on three. NIP with six seconds left, they make it through. They make it through just barely once again. That is such a highly stressful situation for NIP as well because they're running into a fully defended bomb site when that push begins. But this is going to be simple now. 1v3 walking into the blender. He gets the first kill, takes out Forrest, but now it's the perfect crossfire scenario here for NIP. Holding at the back corner. If simple commits to one, the other one will flank. And he's trying to turn it into a 1v1, but he's down to 20 HP and they will jump him in the end. Exist will get the job done, and NIP are one round away from a spot in the semis. Anders, you can't stop these ninjas. Apparently not. It's, it's map and match point right now for the NIP team. I mean, I, I say it again. This is the first time in a, in a very, very long time that we've seen NIP actually look convincing in any tournament. So this is definitely very, very impressive. And... Um, Kind of a big surprise, because like we said yesterday, they were struggling so badly against ESC. They ended up 16 to 13 on cash yesterday against the team that they shouldn't have been struggling against at all. ESC did play really well. Hellraisers, though, had a perfect uh, match yesterday. Two matches, they just won outright, and they finished first in the group, which was absolutely terrific. But now it's a different story. NIP have really come alive. NIP really taking their time here, because again, this is a reset for Iberg. Just for one for one, however, so that's not going to... Well, it's still ideal. They do get an idea of what the firepower is looking like on Hellraiser's side, but who would have liked to get that second frag? That would have really opened the floodgates here. Well, at this point in time, there is... I mean, it's it's not great for Hellraiser's just to be trading because they they really just don't have the, the weaponry for it. And Exist trying to throw that rifle over, which is also a good idea. Hellraiser's need just great entry frags here. They need to make sure that they can shut down NIP before they even get into a bomb site. And they do have the deal inside here on Kucha. Angel also on the crossfire. Deagle not going to work. Forrest just runs in, strolls into the bomb site to take that kill. And this is looking very bad right now for Hellraisers. They could end up being out of the tournament right here, right now. Smoke goes down. Bomb about to be planted right on the grill as well. This B bomb site is about to blow up. It is. I mean, Angel trying to do the best he can here from construction, but he's purple white, and he is now the last man alive. Forrest is spraying through, and Forrest will drop the last frag of the map. Gets the 30 bomb on the nose to put Nip into the semis, and there you have it. Confirmation. Nip are not done yet. They struggled in the groups, but in the playoffs, they 2-0 their first opponent. Yeah, that's a complete surprise. Like I said, I was on board with Thorin's prediction. I thought it was going to be two run for Hellraisers. They looked to me like they were just the stronger team from yesterday. But NIP, I mean, one day's difference, and that's all it took. Then they're back in the driver's seat. And, um, you know, they've shown now, though, that Dust 2 and Inferno are two maps you might want to slightly avoid from them. So that also mean, begs the question, what happens to the rest of NIP's map pool? You know, uh, do they want to end up playing Mirage and Cash later on in the tournament? Who knows? Now we're going to go ahead. I mean, right now we can see the sportsmanship is there. And Hellraiser is not looking too shaken up. I mean, simply even smiling after that. But this is this is still very interesting as far as Hellraiser is concerned. It also went to kind of how Thor described it. You know, they make it out of the groups. They look unstoppable in the groups. But going into the playoffs, Hellraiser, even with Blade, they haven't quite found what it takes for them to get through into the semis. Oh, another team out of the tournament, one that has to join Cloud9 in drinking at the local bar, because I'm pretty sure they were tweeting pictures of that yesterday, and uh, maybe they can find some, some common ground right there. What a performance, though. I mean, get right in the first match, Forrest in the second one, 30 kills. Let's take it up to the studio here.